Welcome to Rewilding Love. This season is with a couple on the brink of divorce. This is episode 31, an interview with Leela Turner. I need to go back to when you got emotional, like you're talking. Like, what happened there? We can't just pretend that didn't happen. To, to feel okay and just to know that that's going to make my human experience be at its most palatable. They get really soft. They stopped trying to be cool or sexy or entertaining or dynamic or impressive. And, and you get that really grainy feeling to them. That's all that's expected is for us to show up and be ourselves. And for me to do this podcast, all that is expected is for me to show up and be me. And, and that's such a relief. Does he like me? Do I like them? How do I leave? Oh my gosh, am I going to introduce him to my family? What about this? I mean, people say they're showing up just to have fun, but they're sort of thinking about how's it going to work when we get a dog. When we tap into that deeper part of ourselves and show up connected in presence, it helps business as well. It helps dating. It helps relationships in general. It, it just ripples out all over. When they were that way, they were natural. And that was the bit that was most beautiful about them. You are listening to Rewilding Love with me, Angus Ross. And me, Rohini Ross. Rewilding Love is a podcast about relationships. We believe that love never disappears completely in relationships. It can always be rewilded. Listen in as we speak with our guests about how they share the understanding behind the rewilding metaphor in their work. And how it has helped them in their relationships. Relax and enjoy the show. We're so lucky to have interviewed Leela Turner today. She is so much fun. She's so articulate. She has wonderful metaphors. And I always love speaking with her. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Leela has an uncanny ability to always think of a metaphor in the moment that is always hilarious and so insightful. So she's one of the most entertaining teachers out there as far as I'm concerned. She is. And we got to speak with Leela about dating, and she has a lot of experience working with frustrated singles. She's the founder of Relationship Ready, which is a sister business of One Thought that she co-runs with her husband, Aaron Turner, who we'll be speaking with shortly. And she created this business because she noticed that a lot of people struggle to find a partner, uh, to enjoy the dating process. And she noticed that it wasn't about their level of attractiveness, how interesting they are. She recognized that a lot of amazing people were just really struggling in this area and not understanding what was really getting in their way. And it became very clear to Leela that this was all a state of mind issue. And the fact that it's state of mind was just so obvious to Leela. Uh, and that's why she's so been so successful in this arena. Yeah, and that's what Relationship Ready was created for, is to help singles that are struggling to enjoy that process of finding a partner. And evidently, she's had a great deal of success there. Yes, we'll hear that as we listen to her share about dating. And the way that Leela works with her singles is really the same foundation from which we work with our couples. And we hope that that becomes really clear that this understanding really applies to all areas of life. It occurs to me that uh, some of the best things about this conversation with Leela were all about some of the things that I really struggle with or, you know, I struggle with. I think a lot of people struggle with uh, in, this, in this idea of just it's okay to show up and be ourselves. And... Um, it's been a, it's kind of been a lifelong struggle for me to to feel okay and just to know that that's in a nutshell is going to what's going to make my human experience be at its most palatable I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm going a little crazy <laughs> uh, one minute I feel like I'm on the edge of bursting into tears <laughs> 
now I feel like laughing. I imagine and hope there's an insight not far behind this, this sentiment that's coming up for me. But I feel what is so beautiful about what Leela is pointing to is that, and what we're all pointing to, is just it's fundamentally okay to show up and be yourself. And why wouldn't you do that in the dating arena when, for the most part, for all these other people that she's been working with, they're very well equipped to do that in their professional life, uh, you know, on so many other levels. And yet when it comes to dating, they suddenly get caught up in their head. They have, as she calls it, this tick list. Um, and we all kind of can do that, but it's not the sweet spot. It's when we get ourselves into difficulty. The real um, sweet spot, the crux of the matter, is to show up and be ourselves. And that's when we connect, when we are lost in our mind trying to think about how well am I doing here or how well are they doing here vis-a-vis -vis said tick list, then we're not listening, we're not being present, we're not connecting. And it's all about connectability. That's what, that's what a relationship thrives on. That's where a relationship should start. Ingus, so Ingus, wait. What? Okay, you just, I need to go back to when you got emotional like you're talking. <laughs> like what happened there? We can't just <laughs> pretend that didn't happen. Because... I feel like I, I I feel like I see it so clearly for myself that um, I spent so much of my life hiding behind this mask of having to show up and be someone else other than I am, and it and it and it involves so much pressure, and there's so much um, such a need to control myself and how. I show up and how am I doing, constantly asking myself that question. And I'm so not present to the matter at hand. So <laughs> I guess it was making me realize that even in doing this podcast, there's a part of me that wants to kind of monitor what I'm doing and, or, or, or what I'm saying so that, uh, that I don't come off as a complete buffoon because <laughs> I spent a good portion of my life thinking that I'm a complete buffoon. Uh, and, and in doing something like this, I'm really putting myself out there uh, in a way where I, I feel like I'm subjecting myself to a, a general attitude of buffoonery around how I'm showing up uh, towards me. And so for me, I think in what Leela is talking about is that Again, it's just, it's fun. You know, that's all that's expected is for us to show up and be ourselves. And for me to do this podcast, all that is expected is for me to show up and be me. And, and that's such a relief. And I think probably <laughs> why I feel like that sentiment was coming up, it was like there's a certain amount of relief. And when I could hear myself saying this out loud at a point where my ego is like giving me an ear bashing about <laughs> how well I'm doing and how how I'm sounding, etc. that Leela and the essence of this podcast is, is suggesting that, yeah, that's where we all go horribly wrong. All we have to do is show up and be ourselves and that will have value on every level. And how does it feel to just let yourself be with those feelings? It feels, it feels like, it feels very liberating. And I think that the, the, uh, the emotion that's coming up is just like... <sighs> Oh, I can let that go. I've been hanging on to that for so long. And um, and I think it's meaningful to me because I think that I carried that weight for many years. And I think that that's the beauty of this understanding is that that's something that we get to let go. And we do have that feeling of liberation and that we are fundamentally okay at our core. And that's our design by default. And then I don't have to be anything else or, or try hard to be anything else than, than who I am. Um, and, and then doing this podcast is like, oh, my goodness, how are you doing here? <laughs> my ego is constantly nattering away, trying to give me feedback. And really, I don't have to listen to that voice. I just have to show up and be me. And the ego will do the exact same thing on a date, I'm sure. So I think it was just so wonderful um, what Leela was pointing to and how refreshing it is to think that, yeah, look, it's just another area where our ego gets in the mix and upsets the apple cart. 
uh, and we don't have to listen to that noise because that's all it is. Yeah, and we all have it show up in various areas of our life. Like some people have it show up around dating. Some people have it show up around money. Some people have it show up around parenting. There's no rhyme or reason to it really. I mean, maybe based on our conditioning, but it's all crazy talk. It's just we all have areas of our life where we're really sane and we're not thinking about ourselves. We don't feel self-conscious. We just show up naturally. And then we have other areas of our life where we turn into crazy people and buy into all of our insecure thinking. <laughs> and it looks really difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that for me in this podcast with Leela, it's just I think I was I have been feeling self-conscious listening to myself through the earphones, <laughs> struggling to string a sentence together sometimes. And none of that really matters as long as I'm just willing to show up and, and, and be me and, and trust the wisdom will come through. The wisdom comes through in all kinds of ways and it doesn't necessarily have to come through in eloquence. Um, it can just come through me being able to share a story or, 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 or share an insight and, and that has value as long as I'm willing to just show up and, and be authentic on that level. And what she pointed to is that it isn't really ever about the content of what's being shared. It's really about the feeling that we're in. And it's that feeling that comes across. And just you sharing what you shared just now, like, I felt that. I was impacted by that. That was you sharing something incredibly valuable that I'm sure other people will be able to relate to. I can certainly relate to it. And that you have the willingness and the courage to just show up as yourself and allow that to happen, to me, is is a gift. Yeah. And I guess if I was to listen to my ego, my ego would be like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You're sounding like a gibbering maniac. <laughs> but... But I so hear what you're saying, because on another level, yeah, it's just good to just show up and be me, warts and all. Yeah, for all of us. Tears, tears and laughter, <laughs> however crazy that may sound. It's still, that's who I was in that moment, and that's yeah. fundamentally, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the freedom of that. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's all about Leela, it's not about me. <laughs> Okay. Well, I love what she had to share, and it's completely on point with what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, no, what she had to share is so awesome. I feel like you're really in for a treat, and just enjoy. Yeah, let's turn it over to Leela. Leila, thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to have you. One, because we have so much fun every time we speak with you. So we're looking forward to it just on a purely selfish level. Yes, absolutely. And also because you uh, focus in the area of dating. And that's something that Angus and I often get asked about. And I think that there can be a lot of thinking about dating for people. And they um, can get caught up in it being difficult. And there's just lots of ideas about how it can't, it's not fun. And I know from the work that you do that you really look at how to have that be a different experience for people. And so we would really love to hear you share more about what you do, how you see it, what you notice, those kinds of things. So we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I think that uh, we, I, I for one feel very privileged to have you on this, con this podcast talking about this topic because it's a really important topic and if we're going to talk about relationships obviously we need to address this uh, this topic as it were and I would say it would seem that you're, you're the consummate expert on this topic in terms of what you're what you've been doing and what you're pointing to and so I think it's fantastic that we have you here today to have this conversation so one of the places I'd like to start is what do you hear from your clients about dating in terms of the challenges that they come up against? Well, it's, it's funny. Um, looking back to one of my inspirations for what I saw as a challenge um, for my friends, like back in college when I was in my 20s, and it's it's this has sort of theoretically been solved but actually didn't solve the problem so that what I had with my friends in college is that they were you know all single they were in their late 30s sorry mid 30s or late 20s and we were all doing an MA together in fashion and 
they were attractive go-getters. I mean, they basically, to get into the college I was in, they had to be really good. And so they were driven. It wasn't like they were floating along and they did that degree. And then, I mean, they really, you would have had to have gone out of their way. So they were focused, ambitious. Just everybody's work was kind of exciting and different. And so they were just really diverse, interesting kind of women to hang out with. But most of them were single. Most of them had relationships in their 20s and they'd petered out or it hadn't felt right. And they'd kind of got to the point where they felt really comfortable in who they were and what they were doing in their career. But they just thought, well, where's the boyfriend? And it seemed like it got harder, but it made no sense. We're living in London, like we were studying in the centre of London. Everybody was going out to bars and clubs, you know, a number of times a week, very social. And I, it, we just assumed it was because we're in an industry where most of the guys dated guys. There weren't that many men in the industry or in our course that were into women. That looked like a reason. And then we thought, well, you know, because it does feel like a bit you get into your kind of own salmon stream of friends and it's hard getting out of that friendship group. And it, so it looked like just not meeting enough people. And I was like, that's so weird. How come you can't meet people? You're going to bars. And so that looked like a reason. And then you fast forward to I remember moving to America. Aaron started working with couples, which was um, a sort of bookend to the inspiration behind Relationship Ready. But I noticed that, you know, some most of them ended up finding relationships and thinking, oh, it's got to be work or a relationship. It, it felt like people always choose when they're struggling with a choice, it's between one crappy choice and another crappy mm-hmm. choice, mm-hmm. as opposed to I call it like option A is a bit rubbish and option B is like rubbish again. But they feel like that's the but option C. They never even think about option C, but you can't get option C from looking at old thought. You have mm-hmm. to get option C you know, have to wait and see to get option C. Um, so I, when dating apps started to get more popular, you thought that would solve it. Like you really did think if it was a matter of meeting people, bingo, done. Even then the ones that will match you up by the exact percent. Like I remember meeting sort of, um, you know, really professional women that would, you know, on their third business go out on dates and they're quite excited because it was a 97% match. Mm. And I come back and expect them to be, you know, married or, you know, <laughs> something. And they'll be like, oh, it was all right. Like, it was just a bit <laughs> all right. And I'm sure they, you know, they'd had a nicer chat with the guy serving them coffee and pray. It just wasn't. <laughs> so all of these things, what I started to see was all the things that people wanted to blame it on weren't the thing. Hmm. So, you know, I just, I, rem- you know, I've been I don't don't count actually it's 27 years maybe I've been with Aaron Mm -hmm. um so I I am pre you know pre-online dating era I you know I'm semi child bride I was 21 (laughs) (laughs) and um it's 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 been interesting watching it and I think the thing that really got to me is as I particularly when I moved back to London and started working with really capable passionate women that just really knew how to make a business work in the world, but couldn't get their relationship up and going. And I kind of, when I would work with these women and they would get really quiet, I would just see this beauty inside of them. I mean, there's one woman that I worked with at the really beginning, she's just absolute heart of gold. And I'm like, that shouldn't be just kept for Mm -hmm. you. That should be something you can share. And she tried everything. She had been decades, she'd been looking. And she'd been trying to apply all of her mythology, you know, and techniques, really. Of She she was on our second or third business. She tried to apply those skills to finding Mm. somebody. And like everybody else, put it down to the good ones are gone or, you know, it's just just the things that, you know, are easy to point to. Well, it must be that all the good ones are gone or it must be I'm too picky, you know, all of these reasons. And all I knew was, she is so gorgeous and has so much to share and anybody to be with her would be lucky. Mm -hmm. But she'd got really quiet working with me and she didn't show up most places quiet. She showed up really in charge boss lady. Mm -hmm. I could see the sweetness in that, but like I would just be with her and she'd help me and sort me out. You know, she just, just, but she would always be helping. I mean, she never came off duty. And so she didn't know how to come off duty in dating and I saw this pattern over and over and over again so with my college friends when I looked started to look back I realized 
when you were kind of with a bunch of friends, everyone's a bit jacked up and having fun and they're kind of being their stereotypical funny, whatever their role is in your friendship group. But when you were with them and you hung out or had a sleepover, they get really soft. Mm-hmm. And they stopped trying to be cool mm-hmm. or sexy or entertaining or dynamic or impressive. And, and you get that really grainy feeling to them where they were just soft and there is a texture to people when they're natural. Mm-hmm. And I just knew that that's, that's the bit where I loved them. You know, I loved them when they ran out of being clever and I loved them when they ran out of being entertaining or helpful. It's the bit, that bit, the soft textured part. And so I just, I just knew there was something in the way. So it, it gets blamed on many things. It gets blamed on not meeting enough people. That can't be a case because you can go on dates that yeah, there's just not the right caliber of person out there. I'm too picky. A lot of people are really quite frightened of giving up independence because they'll see their friends do marriages or relationships a certain way. And they think that's an option that they're choosing from. So option A is be on my own and not rely on anyone and don't get hurt. And option B looks like give up all my identity, all my freedom, all the stuff I've achieved. Because a lot of the, you know, the women I work with have achieved a lot. So they don't need anyone to look after them. They don't need anyone to pay for them or do anything. It's just the heart part, sharing their heart someone in that way and so they don't need those things and they often think being with somebody means giving up their independence they think compromise means doing something they're not comfortable with so what happens is they start to build up a ton of ideas so that where option b comes in option sucky b you know (laughs) and they don't realize well what if you invented it in the moment like what if option c is who you are when you're nice natural version of you so I could see with my friends and I could see with my clients when they were that way, they were natural. And that was the bit that was most compelling and beautiful about them. And then when they talked about going out on a date, it was like they're climbing concrete stairs with every single step. Okay, I got online, looks all right. And one step after another step up into their head. Oh, and I got to the restaurant and then they didn't open the door. I got to the restaurant and he, he ate in a funny way. I mean, it's really normal. This is not... This isn't people who are mean. These are people who are going and they're nervous of ending up being vulnerable or something going wrong. So their head is climbing up a concrete step at a time. Mm -hmm. So by the time they sat down at the bar or the table, they are so unnaturally themselves. (laughs) (laughs) Like insecurity is not sexy, full stop. Right. It just isn't. Like, you can make the hottest person ever. I mean, I wonder what Brad Pitt would look like if he was wildly insecure. Yeah. 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 Probably and very annoying. Man, I know. Why is he so sexy when he eats? We just He seems to eat in every movie he's in. And, like, how sexy is it when someone's in their own skin, even if they're eating? I don't particularly like listening to people chew, but I'll watch Brad Pitt eat. <laughs> so, yeah, I could, I could it, was, it was seeing that, you know, that people were showing up with, and they will swear blind to me. Oh, no, no, I was just there to have fun. And I'm like, well, why is your voice a few pitches higher then? <laughs> no, 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 it was all cool. I didn't really care. You know, when kids are little and they're trying to be like, I don't mind, it's fine. You know, like I'm like, I don't know that I believe you. So a lot of my time is spent convincing them, I'm not sure you're the most natural version of you. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm really good. You sound intense. You're not normally, oh, no, no, it's great. It's just, and then they'll give you the reasons. Hmm. Hmm. it's coming from anywhere other than their own mind and the crazy thing about that is bit between the soft rich texture part of them and then the chunk of thinking in between is not difficult Hmm. it's not hard it's not years of unraveling you know childhood or therapy or previous experiences so I had a lady recently who had had a seven-year gap she was in her mid-30s really bright just cute as a button and got online and started um met a guy within the first week she had a seven-year um sabbatical and she liked him so much she felt sick like Mm -hmm. there was so much of a connection she was nauseous and just couldn't sleep or eat and like and so she reached out to me and said could we work together and we just worked together on her thought ghosties I mean she was getting like haunted Mm. like all of her past was going what if oh my god and then and so she was like it's like her instincts had it really really had she'd followed her wisdom really beautifully like so when she wrote her dating profile she said oh I wrote have you ever heard anyone say this 
I wrote the most gorgeous dating profile. I was so proud of that. No one says that. No one says mm. that. No one says that ever. Was, people say that never. And she was just, and then she put it on and then she connected. And then, and then as soon as there was a connection, she freaked out. But up until that point, she was really natural. There was nothing on it. And then suddenly it's like someone standing at a door saying that they, you know, they want to get married or something. And, and so we worked together every week for, I think, eight weeks and just really dissolved the thoughts we didn't have to pack them away. We didn't have to analyze them, but to see what she was doing was utterly paralyzing her. And, and they're, oh, so they're moving in together now. Very sweet. And, you know, she's, and it's really lovely. A lot of our conversations were around, you can have a voice, you know, the principles don't mean that you then become like an inflatable dolly of goodness. Like you can have a, <laughs> You can be yourself. Like if something you don't like, you can say, or something doesn't feel good, you can say, but you're going to, your perception is going to be shifted depending on the feeling you're in. So you can have a voice and say anything, but the feeling you're in will definitely dictate the receptivity and how much space there is in the, in the conversation. So it's gorgeous because she has a really to use an American word, spunky personality, and he's fiercely bright and capable. And, and th there was a lot of potential for clashing and they have this beautiful middle ground where they listen to each other and they give themselves space to be utterly human. They don't take mm -hmm. it personally. Mm -hmm. So neither of them are perfect. And so I, well, I, I describe that as finding your perfect imperfect. Oh, that's great. Leila, in terms of the work that you did with that woman, I'd love to, for you to share a little bit more when you said that you looked at, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but working with the ghosties or looking at that, like, what, what do you mean? Like she was being haunted by her worries, her anxiety from previous situations? Yeah, she was, she was, um, she was getting really sort of ghosted by her ex previous experience of relationships. Oh my God, what if they're like that? What if it's mm -hmm. going to be like this again? What if I'm going to have to be this kind of person? What if, you know, just sort of the what ifs, it's sort of like it was projecting itself onto the person in front of her that wasn't that person, which is really unhelpful because then you don't, you, it's really, it's, you don't get to be able to listen to your wisdom in the moment if you're distracted by a memory. So the smart, smartest version of you is a, is a version that's in the present. Mm -hmm. So we just talked about being comfortable with that's what that was, but it was nothing to do with him. You know, she was blaming those ghosties on him. She didn't even really mm -hmm. get to know him. It was like, it was just all getting projected like a projector on a white wall. And she just really, really settled down. It just, she allowed it to melt. Does that make sense? I mean, people have lots of ghosties. They have, you know, what's so sweet about working, I mean, from my experience working singles, is all the things that I think people externally are a bit judgy about them. Like, oh, you have a tick list, you want too much, da 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 you're being picky. Everything, everything a single is doing to protect themselves is to protect themselves from a thought that they've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, say if something doesn't work out, that gets looked that gets locked away as shame something mm -hmm. wrong with me like I'm no good at relationships I'm not good at that or uh, you know so they don't want to have those feelings associated with it not working out in the past and what's so fantastic is I worked with a another lady recently and it's just she's so soft and sweet she was she had a she had what I would call the most magnificent uh tick lists ever she had like just oh she wanted to be like tre cherished and it's just gorgeous. I mean, I'm only saying this because she's she shared this and it's just it's just so lovely. But she she stopped taking it personally if it didn't work out. She just trusted, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it didn't work out. And if they don't like me when I'm being really human, that's okay. Like really, really, like really, not like you know when people say, oh no, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <clears throat> So do you, you know, like it's a kind of like a, yeah, I'm just never gonna, I'm not, I'm fine with it, but I will never speak to you again and I will now block you. <laughs> but she's genuinely really generous because she's not reliant on dates to make her feel good. So mm. I think a lot of people are showing up, uh, you know, it's like people trying to get Instagram followers. If it goes well, it means I'm worthwhile mm -hmm. as opposed to 
if it's not right for one person, I genuinely believe, and I think this is true within marriages and everything, if it's not right for one person, it's not right for the other. Yeah. Deep down, it can't be right for one person. You could be really in love or into it, but when you get quieted down, I just believe there's a sort of a truth that there's something else for you. Mm -hmm. So I just loved how she talked about that. It wasn't that it wasn't any more like a, a, a notch on the failure, you know, notch, mm -hmm. another one failure. It was like, oh, okay, just really organic, really in the moment, really. And she said that actually showing up like that, she just got a totally different caliber of attraction online. Different guys kind of attracted to her reaching out. The way she described it, well, she said like a, a nicer quality guy or something, but she just really softened. So she, what was she was able to be as herself, I think felt different. Mm hmm so people will get, be able to get a more natural feel for who she was well, mm -hmm. rather than her drivenness. And people mm -hmm. can misinterpret that. Did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. I, sorry, excuse me. I keep thinking of uh, that Justin Timberlake song, I'm Bringing Sexy Back. Wasn't that the song? Do you remember that? But um, can we in sing, terms can you sing it for us, please? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> dare try singing it. It would oh, be awful. No, I can't. Could you at least say some much, of the lyrics? Far too much thinking. I guess that is the lyric. I'm bringing sexy back. And then there's a whole, you know, there's a whole accom musical accompaniment with that. Um, but my point being is it's like the best version of ourselves. And it seems this is right across the board, not just in relationship. But the best version of ourselves is we show up um, and we're natural. Like that, that softness that you're pointing to. Um, we show up and, and we have a trust in our essential nature. We have a trust in that wisdom to prevail real time and, and, and allow us to be the best version of ourselves. And it's so easy to get caught up in, in what we think we should be or what we expect and our old, chest, our old checklist, our old rule book. Um, and, and that's when things tend to go awry. And it was kind of, I guess that's how I heard what you were saying. In, in a way that it is really sexy to show up and be ourselves. When people show up and, and, and really trust in their core essential nature to, to, sort of, to, to sort of give them with a wherewithal to, um, to, to know what to say in those moments rather than sort of rely on what things what we think should, things should be or how they should be or how we should be able to articulate ourselves. It's like... That just becomes awkward and, and contrived and, 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 and kind of takes us out of the present moment. And I think the sexy is in the present moment. Is That's when we feel like we can relax and really be with this other person. Um, and I think that uh, it's so interesting to me how that's so universal. Um, whether it's doing this work, pointing a client towards their essential nature and just trust in that. Or it's like, being on a dating site or going on a date and being with another another human being and just show up and, and be honest and authentic. And, it, and I can see how that is really sexy because there's no mask. There's, there's just like, let's just cut to the chase of who we really are. Mm -hmm. So I love how you're articulating. I always love how you articulate yourself. Um, and even for me, it's kind of like, there's a part of me is like, oh my goodness, Leela's so articulate. It's like, I'm going to really like, how am I going to talk to her and, and, and show up and say something smart? But that's me getting caught up in that very same way that you might get caught up on a date. It's like I start to, you know, worry how I'm presenting myself rather than just show up and trust that the words will come out of my, my, come out of my mouth real time. And that will be the wisdom flowing through me. And, and that's what everybody wants to see. Mm. It really is, and it doesn't matter if you're nervous. Like, if you've got a direction to go, which is relaxing and trust things, I think a lot of people don't know that when they're present and at ease, they think at ease means doormat or vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually, um, I'm, I told you I'm doing some writing at the moment, and I've got a chapter in my book called um, Soft Has Muscles. Because it's powerful. The mind, yeah. when it's quiet, has so much intelligence in it. If you want to be smart, relax. Mm -hmm. If you want to see clearly, slow down. And it, it's just gorgeous because you don't need to figure it out. The reason why dates are so uncomfortable for people is the amount of analysis and worried, mm. insecure thinking. And the, really, they're trying to figure it outness. 
Does he mm-hmm. like me? Do I like them? How do I leave? Oh my gosh, am I going to introduce them to my family? What about this? I mean, people say they're showing up just to have fun, but they're sort of thinking about how's it going to work when we get a dog. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it, it, there's a really funny, if anyone gets to see it, maybe you should put a link in there. It's old, um, do you remember Drop the Dead Donkey in English? It was an English all-female comedy show. And they they do these dating, um, they do these really funny little dating clips. And one of them shows up on the video because it used to be you do the video and you decide if you want to go on a date. And she it's obviously a a skit and she shows up in a full wedding dress. (laughs) She's like, hi, (laughs) nothing serious. I'm feel easy going, whatever you want. And then another one shows up with three kids behind her. Hi, say hi to daddy. Say hi to daddy. I mean, it's very funny. It was like, you know, it was the early 90s, but... You know, we show up with thought. And yeah. if we don't fess up to it, then we're going to blame it on our date. You know, we're going to yeah. blame it on that some fun. I had one woman at a conference say, you know, I'm torn because, you know, I'm working on my career and I kind of feel like if I have to put all that effort in, it's that or the career. And I'm like, well, there's, the, I'd, you know what she said? She said, I'd rather stay home and watch Star Trek reruns. And I'm like, I like you. I want to hang out with you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> But I said to her, I said, look, there's the clue. If you would rather do something relaxing than go on dating, it shows how much thought you were applying. Mm. And that's unhelpful. Mm-hmm. See, the beautiful thing about wisdom is it will never make sense on paper. Mm. So why try and figure it out with mathematical and physical equations and previous histories and what your friends told you and mm. what did it say in that book? You know, all of those kinds of things. Isn't that interesting in the sense, in, and it reminds me of what you were saying earlier about the client who is this very effective businesswoman and that probably for every other aspect of her life, everything else does make sense on paper. Like she's very good at the paperwork, very good at the analysis and is in business that's really successful. But to really show up and have a date or a relationship work really well, that's all got to be thrown out the window because it doesn't make sense it's something that's formless. It's just showing up and, and trusting, trusting in the ether, I'm sure, as far as she would see it, but trusting in that wisdom real time. What, what she ended up doing was meeting someone that kind of tried to chat her up and she's like, oh, no, 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 you're not on my tick list. <laughs> and then and then, and then, then something, you know, we'd been working together and she's like, oh, all right, hang on a second, don't rush. You know, what, she says, there's something about him. He's sweet and charming and cheeky. She said, all right, I'll be friends with you. She said, they took it really slow and they were friends for a while and then it blossomed. And it was just lovely. And she's so soft in that relationship and she trusts herself. So she doesn't do anything that doesn't feel right. Nothing. Mm. But she doesn't manage him and she doesn't manage herself within it. And it's extraordinary. And they're, they're, they're well, they're under COVID now, lockdown, but they were, you know, they're engaged to be married. And just seeing her so natural and actually, she uh, softened with him in a way that was really unconditional. And then I actually, with a colleague, she has a really fantastic business helping businesses grow. And I got feedback after she'd worked with us that her, she had capability because she's on it and really passionate. But when she got the mind part, they said she was off the charts incredible. Mm off the charts so mm. her skill and passion and drive took her to one level so you got it i'm not gonna i'm making this up number like seven and something you know she pushed through a 10 they just said oh my gosh she you know she was so present she was so there we really felt heard and we got so much done in so little time i mean it's fantastic and that happens quite a lot where i work with someone to work on their relationship and they report that they've their clients have tripled and I'm like, it's all very well. What's happening with the boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eye on the prize. Oh. The prize lady. <laughs> I actually did have one lady do the do the program and and I speak to her on the phone. This is a really lovely woman. She's in her early 40s, really, really good at what she does. I mean, again, totally would, you know, you can tell she never drops the ball on anything. And then, you know, was dating less professionally, if you like. Anyway, and so, but what she discovered is she discovered a connection with herself that she said it took her 41 years to discover that. 
She said, Lila, I feel so connected to myself. I mean, she was literally glowing. I mean, she's glowing and she's glowing from the feeling that comes from inside you when you're not managing your thoughts. Mm. And she's, I mean, it's like standing next to a radiator, but like sexier, I guess, a sexy radiator, <laughs> right? And she's just, it's lovely because when I get on these calls after, my cheeks really hurt because I'm like, okay, I'll do another program. That was awesome. Because I'm always like, it's, you know, it's been something I do alongside um, one thought. And I'm always like, oh, you know, will it keep, you know, and every time I hear a story like that and she says, I am so connected and so into dating myself. I don't want to date anyone. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's awesome. But what kind of, that's a strange testimonial okay <laughs> and I'm like what well, because you don't know like I, I started it all on a hunch I knew there was something in the way I knew people had a beautiful beautiful feeling inside of them that kind of got covered over with a lot of analysis and thought I knew that they wanted to share that part of themselves but didn't know how like they kept running it's like have you ever run into a glass door <laughs> admit it <laughs> yes. yeah, <laughs> come on i have really i'm bad. sure i have i can't remember no, but i'm sure like, i have oh, why can't i go outside why is the dating not working it's right there it's right there i've done anyway so you're smushing your face and i was like that's okay so i there's been lots of things that have come out of it. i'm like oh that's really cool they're really happy i wonder where that's gonna go and then i speak to her i don't know like a six weeks later and she'd fallen in love with somebody um but it's it's it doesn't it doesn't have a, a set shape which is so amazing it mm. just allows people the freedom to more naturally recoup themselves it's like you know um have you, have you probably seen kiss the ground movie i haven't seen i it. haven't no okay you have to watch it if you're you know with the wilding in the soil and you know oh yes i've heard of it i think yeah. oh my god i had to watch it twice and um it's a little bit like, you know, the principles. We're like, hey, we have an answer. What do we do about all the suffering? We have an answer. Oh, yeah, I know that's great, all oh, lovely, but what do we do about all, this, all the confusion or the <laughs> lack of communication in politics? What do we do about that? We don't know. We're going to go go and look at some prehistoric ideas we wrote down earlier. Um, and that movie talks about how we have a solution to not just um stop creating heat because apparently our environment is going to keep baking us even if we stop using plastic and all of mm. that junk right now you what you need is an active cooling they have found a way to use agriculture to not only stop the heat but drag the heat out of the atmosphere mm. Mm. and i'm like the answer's there mm -hmm. um and I've totally forgotten why I was going to reference that movie, but it's still a good plug. Kiss the ground. No, it's good. It was right. We just watched um, the Kiss biggest the little I farm. Walk on, maybe it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss the ground. I walk on. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I think what you were saying is how when people wake up to who they are naturally, it it ripples out. And that's that's the answer in terms of lots of different areas of life. It's not just about dating. It, it ripples out everywhere. It could be, um, Angus, you're saying that in you know the intellect is helpful in business. But what you're saying is, Leela, is like when we tap into that deeper part of ourselves and show up connected in presence, it helps business as well. It helps dating. It helps relationships in general. It it just ripples out all over. And one of the things that I hear you say is that people think they're being natural when they're not. They'll say, I'm okay, but they're not really okay. Like I'm being myself, but they're not really being themselves. So tell us more about how that looks when you're supporting someone that thinks they're being natural, but they're really still caught up in a lot of their thinking. I, I remember having, I mean, it's really different because a lot of these conversations are happening one-to-one. -one. So I do stuff where it's in a, a retreat format, which mm -hmm. is divine and heavenly and it was just really gorgeous and then a lot of the work happens with the one-to-ones so it's always a bit of a different conversation and I just listen and I'll hear something and I'll ask them about it and they'll I'll say hey what's that you know what's that about and they're like nothing to be seen here I'm I'm good I'm like I don't know I can feel something what's that <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking to this lady once who was just you know a couple of pictures high no 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 I'm good I'm you know that's slightly you can feel it when someone points to it, but if you're in that story, that story is going to look room temperature, isn't it? Oh, no, mm -hmm. no, I'm good when I, like how many of us go into a corner shop or the supermarket, not ourselves? You wouldn't notice it because I'm mm -hmm. in a store. 
or I'm in this store, I'm in this store, but you go into a gear that's invisible to you because you're used to the feeling and you associate that feeling with a shop mm-hmm. or a family member or whatever it is, or your kitchen, or your, I mean, I have a different feeling if I walk into my bedroom as opposed to my kitchen, not because they're different rooms, because I think differently. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to this one lady and I, I, I starting to listen to her and I'm like, look, it feels like to me when people want to go and get connected and they say they're turning up as themselves and they really swear they are. And if they're not getting connected, it's because there's thought. And it doesn't mean you have to get connected and then it's automatically you want to date them. But connection is a connection to yourself. It's your own presence. And then when you can have someone who's not even listening to you and feel connected to them, they don't have, it's not like they have to be a certain way, but connection is your own presence of mind. And then from that, you know, comes whether that whether a further connection happens. And the way I described it to her, as I said, look, it's like you want connection is like wanting to moisturize your hands. Your hands are so dry. I'm just, you never get your hands really dry and you're just gasping and hunting around the house. Where did I put my hand cream? So starting off with, you know, the first date and you go off and you go and get a big tub of, I don't know, cheap E45. I don't think they have any more, but like just, I don't know, some kind of random average brand cream and, and you put the cream on. And it does nothing. And you think, oh, now the thing is, is showing up with thought on your mind on a date is like wearing latex gloves hmm. and putting on hand cream. And you're like, wow, this cream is rubbish. <laughs> I need to go for a higher caliber kind of guy. <laughs> Maybe he's not earning enough. So you go off and you buy, a, you know, like a, a bottle of cream that's like got an extra zero on it. So, you, you know, it's a, it's a $50, you know, hand cream thing. And you put it on you and you're like, oh, smells so good. It should be so good because I bought it from this really good store and you're rubbing it on and your hands are just like, I'm not feeling anything. I can't feel anything. And because you're not looking at the thoughts you have, you'll go and get the $350 eye cream. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like the tiny pot and like a scraper. You, don't, you just think it's a matter of getting a quality enough. And it's like, connection is when the gloves are off Mm. so I will use examples like that that came from working with a client Mm -hmm. I mean that just came up because I was talking to her and it resonated so I'll just talk I mean that's a bit quirky but I'll talk about something I think they can hear where they can see the feeling they're in so I get a lot of a lot of women and men who show up in a a kind of like capability mode so super dynamic really really dynamic and I'm like are you ever not on duty? I'm like, what mm. do you mean? I'm like, well, what does on, off duty look like for you? And, and sometimes people don't know what I mean because they're that way with their friends. They're that way with themselves. They come home and they might put the radio on and put, you know, and a lot of us mm. do that. We'll make noise because we are always in a gear. So then my job is to go, well, what happens if you didn't do that? Mm. You know, I mean, it's a very creative conversation, but at some point they go, oh, Oh, that because people are looking up in their head to the stories and what they see in front of them they're not looking to their own feeling and their own feeling your feeling doesn't tell you what kind of person you are it just tells you the kind of thought you're in and it's really helpful and your feeling will never lie so the amount of times i've gone into my daughter's bedroom would be like you really need to pick this I think my voice is like this hi darling do you need to pick something up and can I make you a snack and she's like could you get out of my face (laughs) now yes sometimes she's sensitive and at one point she's like could you stop blaming your bad feeling on me and I'm like damn I wish I never taught this (laughs) (laughs) because I and then I looked at my feeling and it's like realizing I had soup all down my mouth and down my shirt (laughs) and I'd been in a meeting because I didn't realize I looked at my feeling it was horrible because I walk into her room and I'm like oh god it's messy in here and oh my god she's gonna live under a bridge isn't she if she doesn't pick up the apple core and you know like I I had so much logic about it when I walked into her bedroom I mean it's just a reaction now I thought I was trying to be helpful and I'm you know but my feeling hadn't lied but I didn't bother looking there did I mm-hmm. you know that's less fun. <laughs> but it was, when she pointed to my feeling, I'm like, oh, God, I'm coming in here, getting reactive, being intense and spreading all over her like Marmite and then saying it's her fault that she's all smudgy and sticky. And salty. Yeah. <laughs> Love it or hate it. Yeah.
our American audience went got a clue what Marmite is. <laughs> Other than it's sticky and it's salty, I think that's all you need to know. And yeah. Yeasty. <laughs> and yeah, you're like Lila saying, you either love it or you hate it. So the other thing that I heard you say, Lila, is that it's understanding about feeling that's important. It's not forcing yourself to be in a certain feeling. So recognizing that you're you're caught up in thought, that maybe you're feeling insecure, that it's not about not feeling insecure. It's just about understanding that 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 is what's going on and then allowing yourself to relax into what is. Did I hear that correctly when you said that earlier? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, there's lots of words that get thrown around like self-love and I have a different view on self-love or maybe not different, but I have a, a, an orientation to it that doesn't make sense to me to the things I've heard before. But I think of this as self-care. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your feeling, you, you idiot, <laughs> you know, that's not self-care, is it really? The yeah. beautiful thing about seeing your feeling is that wisdom kicks in and helps you relax because you're looking at the feeling, not your content of your thinking or blaming on your date. So it's like if I was sitting here and doing a talk and I was nervous and like, obviously no one can see me, but like if you realize you're nervous, your hands relax. Or if you realize your shoulders are tight, you can't help but relax them because you look your consciousness goes to your shoulders. Or if you realize like as soon as consciousness goes into that area of tension, there is an inbuilt mechanism that allows you to relax because by design, you're not supposed to work that way. That's not the most genius version of you. Mm. So, you know, say like a billion times, but the most natural version of you is the upgrade. That's where the intelligence is. So when you're natural and, and that's what's incredible is that we think we're supposed to do something about what we see. When you just look at the feeling, you can't help but start to let go. It's almost involuntary. Mm. And it, especially if you don't connect your feeling to the person in front of you, like you could say, well, they're shouting at me. Mm. But someone shouting at you might be understandable, but it's not going to be the most intelligent version of you. Mm -hmm. So at least being curious and opening the door to, okay, what would happen if I let go and got present? What would make sense to me? So that's one of the most powerful things I do is not strategize rather than like, okay, don't have this thought, have a really better one as opposed to, okay, let me see what's the other end of the fence. So I sometimes think if I'm stuck in a reality, I'm stuck behind a picket white fence and I've got to be honest, I don't know what's the other side of the fence, meaning I don't know what wisdom's going to give me when I let go. Because otherwise I'm just going in from one crappy option A story to crappy option B story that I make up. And I have to be willing to not know for a couple of seconds. Hmm. There's something really beautiful about um, surrendering to that feeling. And I'm sure, um, I, I think about, I'm sure that when I went on dates that, that for me, if I had a moment of insecurity or I had a feeling that would come up, there would be a part of me, oh, no, no, you haven't got time to engage in that feeling. You haven't got time to address that, uh, that, that, uh, that feeling. In, 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 and I would want to avoid it at all costs and, and, and certainly try if I needed to manage it or control it. Um, so I think that it's okay to give yourself the, the, the scope to feel insecure if that's what's coming up for you in the moment i imagine um and there's something about what you're saying about being aware of that or having an awareness around that um that allows you to see is like yeah just by identifying it or seeing it the whole it starts to settle it starts to quiet down that's just the natural order of things it just seems that's just how it is and yet, I'm sure, certainly, when I went through the whole dating experience, it was constantly trying to sort of like put that to one side. You can't afford to look weak or vulnerable. And yet, it's, it's the weak and vulnerable in a way. It's not that it's weak. It's the vulnerable that looks sexy because I'd be showing up and being natural and being authentic. Um, but through this work and this understanding, I can see for myself that when those feelings come up, I'm so much better when I just allow it like a wave to sort of run its course 
and, and move through me uh, rather than be kind of inclined to do anything with it or understand it or engage with it or process it or, or worse still, try and put it away somewhere and store it for a rainy day, look at it later. Um, and and it's still, that's that's for me what insecurity really shapes up and starts to look like is when I try to manage that feeling. And I'm so much more effective when I'm just, you know, oh, there's that feeling. I don't really have to do anything. It's just a weather pattern that's moving through me. I will settle because I'm designed to settle. And and better still is like that that wisdom is, is just, you know, waiting on, it's always on tap, waiting for me to just trust that it will prevail and, 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 and help me and move me to having probably a more optimal human experience. It makes me think of, um, I don't know about you guys, when I first learned to drive, I was kind of crashing the car into everything for quite a while. <laughs> One of them was while I was arguing with a boyfriend singing a goddess song really loudly because he was so rude, um, not promoting that behavior. But I, I, there was a lot of time where I just kept... I was quite a nervous driver, but also intense and heady. And I just kept banging into stuff, nothing serious. But there came a point where I realized there was a symptom and that was my feeling. And this is when I was 17. Hello. And I didn't put it anywhere else in my life, did I? But it taught me <laughs> having a crash is a massive hassle. So when I would see myself speak, I, when I started to see there was a connection between banging into other cars and the feeling I was in right before, I started to get more aware of my feeling because it's a hassle to crash. So, I mean, I didn't have any serious accidents. I mean, they're like little dings. This is mm -hmm. so long ago. But it really gave me an appreciation to this day. If I'm driving and I see my feeling, I'm like, not worth it. And I back off from my story if you like got to be somewhere quickly or I'm in a rush and it's the same with dating so if you show up and the symptoms are there back off from assessing your date because it's not worth it back mm -hmm. off from trying to assess whether you like them back off from trying to figure out what they're thinking back off from everything for it like any the shocking thing it's not like it takes a couple of weeks it takes seconds to back off mm. if you're honest mm -hmm. Mm. You know, and it's the same with cutting kale. I remember once just, you know, have you ever like kale is so fluffy? So fluffy. But like you <laughs> chop a kale and I have my this really nice kitchen, like my fingers stuck in trying to hold it on the board and I'm chop, 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 but I'm pissed off about something. Oh, no. <laughs> che, 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 I cut oh, you. No. I don't know if I thought I was in a movie where they never seem to cut themselves, even though, you know, how people are mad chopping vegetables in movies. And I'm chopping, chopping, chopping. So I assume, and then that goes oh. the end of my finger. Not badly, but enough to have been like, part of the meal you know so I <laughs> extra iron and and and, and it's so stupid but it's like ever since then I, it's like stick with me I had to throw the kale away and hold, hold my finger together for a long time and it was like wow it's not worth doing kale in that feeling hmm. so when I'm chopping and I just start to feel like that fluttery I don't know whatever that tension rushed stressed feeling I'm like it just something kicks in that just slows me way down not worth it not worth it and i've never had to stop chopping vegetables but what's beautiful is i'll slow down and then i know where the knife of my fingers meet whereas when i'm in mm. my head i don't know where the, I, do, I don't have spatial awareness <laughs> right so it's the same with every time i put my foot in my mouth i was like why am i so clumsy i keep saying the wrong thing like i said something really clumsy earlier i should have seen it coming and um and I was like, oh, the symptoms there. I'm a little bit nervous when I say something stupid. Mm. Yeah. And so the symptoms are there all the time. And like, I can keep putting my foot in my mouth and then having to ring, you know, trying to try and, you know, reverse wire it back into my mouth. It doesn't really work. But the feeling tells me, it's a feeling tells me every time, you know, mm. clearly you've got that feeling. So my about to say stupid thing put my foot in my mouth has a feeling about to chop my finger off has a feeling about to crash the car has a feeling and about to try and resolve a conversation with Aaron that's not going to go well has a feeling or my daughter or anything and it's mm -hmm. nuts because it's like kiss the ground the answer is way simpler it's not hard anybody mm -hmm. could get this just take a little time and consider mm. what if all the information is right there if you're neutral and get a, a loving connection to what's happening without any judgment because mm. we're built we're built and designed to work really smoothly look at any six-year-old pretty much 
you know, I have two kids who were very different. One was really outgoing, one was really quiet, but they both had experiences and then let go and showed up and really, really present and they could learn things and they connected with people. I mean, you're designed to work beautifully. You just picked up that they were supposed to analyze when things felt important, which is why people get stuck on dating. Oh no, this is serious. I haven't got long before. I've got to, you know, time, my body clock's going or this is serious because what if they take advantage of me? I'm like, none of that is helpful because the softer, quieter you are, the most, the more intelligent you are. In my experience, to date, excuse the pun. What I hear you saying is that this is how you can show up in life, right? Whether it's chopping your, your vegetables, whether it's driving your car, that paying attention to the feeling that we're in isn't just important for dating. It's helpful for every area of life. It's, it's informative to know what feeling we're in in terms of whether we should keep chopping or not or keep driving or not or stop analyzing or not. And I think that's what makes it um, even easier is because it's not just saying, oh, in this area, you have to pay attention to your feeling. It's saying, oh, in life, you can get better at noticing the feeling you're in and your life will be better as a result of that. Yeah, always. I mean, that's why, I mean, I know the natural version of you is the upgrade because the upgrade is your mind in the moment will give you a really rich experience of pretty much anything. I mean, I've been in the dentist chair where they were pulling out block your ears if you're squirmish they they cut my gum open and were pulling out a wisdom tooth that they had to break into pieces oh because I was like nursing a baby at the time they give me a really short lasting um pain medication Mm. as they're pulling out the second or third piece it wears off and I knew I can't afford to think a single thing like a single thing I mean I'm okay I wasn't like technically dead no thought but I went to a sublime mind I went to utterly quiet and I remember thinking in quite a sort of strange way wow I feel molten fire and tearing I mean I was really neutral about it but there was no pain because I had no judgment or attachment to anything and then I thought well shall I just let them finish because it's a hassle to get a shot which is bizarre because I had a bit of phobia around pain at dentists. And then I had the insecure thought come in. This is so clever, insecure thought. And this will happen on dates as well. What if? The what if thoughts. What if it hasn't fully worn off? Right? <laughs> now, I didn't want to be a hero. I remember Madonna's <laughs> quote, which she, I'm not a hero. I'm having a C-section. I'm, I'm not a hero. Okay, I put raise my hand. I'm fine. I'm fine. This is enough for the experience. But like, how could that have been a rich experience? It's been a nightmare of mine for years because I, I used to think in the dentist chair, what about people who are not, before we had anesthetic and pain numbing? Mm-hmm. But it's amazing. But, it, you know, there'll be times when you don't see it. So I've realized um, in the last couple of months that I, I have been my relationship clients. I am that person in property. We've been trying to buy a house for five years. I am... I am my clients. I ca- I've come up with every mm. single stumbling block and I didn't see the symptoms because mm. I said it's property. It's really expensive in London. All the good houses are gone. <laughs> Can't stand real estate agents. It's, the whole process is so creepy. <laughs> I don't like dealing with it. I'm going to every single, every single checklist I'm talking for the last six months to a year. I didn't spot it. And it was only when I was sitting with a client and she's talking to me and I'm listening, listening. And then I just went, oh, that's me. (laughs) So it's so funny. Exactly the same as online dating. I just looked online. I looked really quickly. The pictures were rubbish. So a lot of people online go, oh, the picture's rubbish. Now, 99% of the people that I work with that end up falling in love with someone online say their pictures was rubbish. Hmm. They might even say what they wrote was a bit wasn't amazing it was just something there there was something Mm. about them that ooh. so I talk about it like being a metal detector you can't see it on the surface but you feel something go titting 
you know? And so I just couldn't believe that I was looking online at these crappy pictures. I mean, how, I mean, the script is the same. Yeah, yeah, I love it. All the it. pictures are rubbish and like they look too small. And I can't even tell you that a kitchen. <laughs> I'm just frightened by the idea that if I bought a house, it would have to be forever. <laughs> And I'd probably have to sell a kidney. And I just made up so many <laughs> terrifying stories. And I just, I didn't step into a building for years. And then I'm listening to the client. and I'm like, well, you know, and I've just realized I had the thought come out of the blue. Leela, maybe you should step into a building. I mean, that was the wisdom thought I had, which sounds like they had to kind of sit me down and give it to me. My wisdom had to sit me down, you know, like an intervention. <laughs> but real basic, like, here's the deal, Leela. <laughs> maybe you should go in to a building, like step into a building. It was so clear. How is it funny how you remember your wisdom thought? Because it's all like it's talking to you. You're like you're a little bit slow because you're going too fast, right? right. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, my God. And so I looked at three properties the following week and had a dating experience. I walked in, it was so exciting to walk into a real physical building and have a, or I would call a conversation with the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt connection in certain parts and I didn't get a tick list. I stopped and my tick list got burned. I thought I only want a kitchen this shape. And I walked in, I was like, well, isn't that cute the way they put their kitchen? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought this thing really mattered to me. And it just totally opened up to what I could resonate with. So if anything, I burned my property tick list to a degree and started to just feel connected with the buildings. And some of them were like, oh, that was so interesting. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But instead of feeling like, oh, another house I didn't buy slash mm -hmm. another relationship I never had, you know, it, nothing got notched. It was like, mm -hmm. wow. And then I fell in, I walked into this house. I don't know, this is, I don't know how long I've been looking for a couple of months and I walk in and I, with every room I go to, my mouth is hurting. I'm smiling so hard. And it was sort of beyond my wildest dreams. It was everything I wanted and I didn't realize, and I'd seen it online the year before, mm. like about eight months before, sorry. And it looked rubbish. I'm like, mm. take, give me a break. This is like, I am my lady. Like I am her <laughs> and it's staring me in the face, but you know, this is property. So I didn't look at my feeling. I didn't look at, I am I am, mm. I need to date the property. I need to date the property world. Mm. Mm. And actually we didn't end up buying that because the access to the garden was really strange and Aaron wasn't into it. And I really want to buy somewhere that we both feel good about. Mm -hmm. And someone calls me up a couple of days ago. Again, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere, which mm -hmm. is also what my singles, they say, well, I don't know, but I'm just taking it one step at a time. The agent calls me up and says, well, it's a two bed. I'm like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. And then it's something in his voice. And I was like, all right, I'll come and have a little look. Yeah. But an offer in that day. Mm. Waiting to find out. Yeah, so you'll see. Mm. Yeah, but it, I was really, the thing was, I was really frightened that I thought if we bought somewhere, I'd never, ever get to change my mind ever again. Mm -hmm. It's the, I was turning up with a wedding dress, basically. Mm. Right. <laughs> right. And I was yeah. just like, no, no commitment here. And I was, people buy and sell houses. I've bought houses and sold. Like in America, we bought a house every two years, like because we had kids and outgrew it. Like, it's not like I don't know. So buying houses before for me was like dating in my 20s, early 20s, late teens, really. Wasn't I wasn't looking for a husband, so it wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. I wasn't worrying that it was going to be forever. It was just for the joy of it. Yeah. And then yeah. it got serious. And now, because London's expensive, I'm like, <gasps> I'm going to have to, like, marry the house. I'm like, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> And actually, I have a client who's in property who basically I worked with her for relationship ready and I had to swap out with her. So I taught her about relationships and she's been teaching me about relationship, about housing. And I she's love like, it. Why have you got all this weight on it, Lily? It's only a house. It doesn't matter. Just if you like it. It's not a big deal. Things work out. See the bigger picture. You just trust yourself. It's okay. I mean, it's pouring out of her, right? The things I taught her about relationships. Yeah. That's so brilliant. It's, it's such a great example. I think that that and that switch, the switcheroo, like, oh, no thinking about relationship, property in London, expensive, all of a sudden, the thinking floods in the what ifs, all of that. And, and we all have these areas where we don't have any thinking, it's just natural. And then we have these other areas and dating seems to be a common one for many people, where the thinking just floods in. And I think especially that 
age difference, like you said, in early 20s, people aren't necessarily having any problem with dating because they're not looking for Mr. or Mrs. Right at that point in time. They're just having fun. But as soon as it starts to look like it's high stakes and they have to find the person that they're going to be with for the rest of their life, then all of that conditioning and worries and concerns jumps in and gets in the way of the thing, the very thing that they really want. Yeah. I had one client once that this guy and I worked with him and I, the first, like second or third one-to-one call with him, he, I thought he got a really big insight in something I said. I'm like, I nailed that. Done. Because <laughs> there is a moment where people kind of pop, you know, like they go like, they, oh, which means pop just means they pop out of their story to the point where they're sat back going, oh my gosh, that's made up. And, you, you, you know, that's, mm. and so I thought that was his moment, right? I was like, oh, awesome. And um, so he ends up finishing the program and I'm chatting with him and I'm asking to talk to him. And I said, well, what was the moment? And I thought this was the moment I was really pleased with. He goes, well, you know, it was a bit where you told me insecurity isn't sexy. I'm like, I don't even, I barely remember that conversation. (laughs) You know, and it was just like, and then he, you know, you know, he had a very, uh, he's got a very loving relationship with someone that was totally not, you know, everything he normally picked I and mean, he's happier than he's been but you know we nobody is sexy when they're insecure unless I don't know maybe there's websites for people who like that maybe some research to do on who that knows? <laughs> but you know like when I met Aaron and he started to get insecure about us early on when he got and he was just adorable from the second I met him he was mysterious he wasn't sort of like a lot of guys were just very aggressive and he wasn't, he was so gentlemanly. I was like, oh, well, he's clearly not interested, which was good because I was quite a lot younger then. I was like 18. And when he, when we started dating and I was 21 and I think he was 24 or something, 24, 25, he got insecure about us and got so insecure. And the more insecure he got, the more I kind of wanted to back slowly out and like call an Uber spiritually. <laughs> I was like, this isn't what I signed up for. Like how many people get with someone and go, I didn't know what they were like. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I was having all that thinking, oh my God. And usually I ended it at a year, but this was earlier than my normal shelf life. (laughs) (laughs) And it's funny, you look at him and he was just, you couldn't put anything wrong with him. And he was beautiful. He was utterly fit. We both did a martial art together. He was beautiful. He was really intelligent, really engaged, really just you know, and just very soft and really, and all these things. But when he got insecure, he looked like a different person to me. And I just, I just started to give me the shivers. Now, luckily, that's when he came across the principles Mm. and saw what insecurity was. Mm. And he, when he came back from that trip, I called him up, 50-50 was going to dump him. He believed I was going to dump him. (laughs) He's so gorgeous. I'm such such a near on idiot. He turns up and I... He walks into the room and he's a different man. Mm-hmm. Now, not only was he relaxed again, he was more relaxed than I'd ever seen him. And I was writing about it recently. His eyes were shinier. His skin looked like it was glowing. He looked mm. like when someone's insecure, it's like they're partially occupying their body. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're yeah. just in their upper left shoulder, but they haven't kind of sunk into the rest of it yet. He was <laughs> flooding through every part of him with such ease. I was like, girl, <laughs> like I literally wanted to climb inside and take a nap inside of it. I mean, he just everything. I couldn't take my eyes off him. He was so gorgeous. And I'd never seen him that comfortable in his own skin and that's all from where his mind was at so you I work with people who are all different shapes and sizes I will work with I remember working with one woman and she is epically hot she's literally like a neuroscientist it's so smart she's in her 20s she's it's incredible I said look it's your mind that's messing this up because you you are not losing any scores on hotness or like you were just epically you're like seriously if people want to make up it's an external thing the only thing getting in the way is how you're thinking. That's it. And But it's equally same for people who think that they need to be thinner or less successful or, you know, all of these things. Turns out that's not true either because it's how much you let your free mind, your natural mind run through your body. Yeah, that's beautiful.
that metaphor you used about the metal detector in terms of our intuition, how that gives us a signal. To me, that's the antidote to any of the complaints I've heard about online dating, because I can't imagine how it is to, you know, go through a sea of people in that world. But if you're paying attention to that feeling inside of you, then you're going to be drawn to certain people and not drawn to other people. And you won't know why. But all you need to do is follow that inclination and see what shows up and and learn and, you know, have some fun, hopefully while you're doing it. Yeah, it's it's kind of fascinating when I think about this um, because so much of it is about in the way that I would probably talk to clients, trusting your instincts and, and kind of having a discernment of, you know, instinct is, is another way of saying this is the wisdom coming through in the moment. And yet we get so reliant on, on the hard drive and, 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 and the analysis. And that I've spoken to various businessmen who, who, who can cite all these instances in their career where they trusted their instincts and they prevailed in the most in, you know, exceptional ways. Yet when it comes to relationship, it's like that all goes out the window. Um, and yet it is right across the board in every area of our life. If we learn to trust our instincts, trust that wisdom, trust in the design that uh, it's it's always going to prevail in in, in the, probably the best possible way if we just surrender to it. Like going into a house, isn't it interesting that you know you trust your instincts and you trust your feeling, like you say, and, and then you're all smiles. It's like ah, there, you know, there's my instinct coming through. There's my wisdom shining through. And yet we can come in and show up with our checklist, and and that's just yesterday's news, old old thoughts and or d dismiss you know that person like you'd seen that house you know eight months ago and said no I'm not good enough and then you actually go check it out and you have a different experience yeah well I have definitely the one we just put an offer and again I don't know what's going to happen but it I had to I had a second view to I had to get over my my um sort of reaction um reactions because I wanted to get reactive oh it's cramped in this bit of hall oh it's dark in here and my mind wanted to sort of keep telling me there was something wrong with it. And I had to just literally sit down and say, how do you feel? Because mm. it wanted to keep telling me what was wrong with it because I'm a bit frightened. I mean, seriously, I'm a bit frightened. I'm like sort of like, a you know, I'm just showing up like, please don't break my heart. <laughs> you know, please don't, <laughs> me, please don't bankrupt me. Please don't be, a, please don't find out this dry rot. Please, you know, like it's like, so I'm showing up and my mind is trying to argue with me what if rather than just sit down and see how I feel because mm -hmm. how you feel is never going to make sense with logic ever. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make sense on paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Leela, I know we've gone over time, so I just want to say thank you for your generosity. And I've loved this conversation. I've loved the metaphors you've used and it just makes so much common sense that when we're, looking for a partner that we get quiet and listen to that deeper knowing inside of ourselves like that's it and it doesn't matter if you're dating online it doesn't matter if you're meeting people in person it's still the same part of us that is feeding us that information and i know for angus and myself when we met it was absolutely that metal detector going ding 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 when i saw you because i had no idea of anything about you and so it's it's just being willing to pay attention and, and check it out and it doesn't mean that every time you check that feeling out that it's going to turn into a relationship or a house or a job but it's it's a step in the direction and every time we listen to that part of ourselves I think that builds that relationship and it makes it easier for us to hear those inner promptings and to trust those inner promptings the way that you're saying no, it's a really nice point and I think I was just listening to you and I'm you know I think the biggest thing that people can look at is is to slow down because actually sometimes I've had some people go out on dates and get really connected but not realize that it's not an attractive it's just they end up being really good friends because mm -hmm. they connected yeah. yeah so just following your nose for connection and what feels like light and like nice just follow nice it's not what we're used to following mm. yeah Makes it sound really bland, doesn't it? But you know what I'm saying. 
sexiness. Follow beige. <laughs> Billy just said follow beige. I think she said follow beige. Beige is the new black. When you were talking about Aaron coming back from that trip and how gorgeous he was, it did not sound beige to me at all. It sounded very hot and sexy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing is I'm just realizing like every single one of the things that ties the people together that look in this direction in terms of dating is they all surprise themselves. Hmm. So if you're in old thought, just know you are capable of surprising yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. We can call this episode Beige is the New Sexy. (laughs) I like Beige is the New Black. It's 50 shades of beige. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Uh, I I just, I mean, it's, it's so wonderful just how universal this understanding is because everything that you have said is is applicable uh, to all the all the facets of our life uh, and, and 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 you express yourself so beautifully uh, and I think that it's just wonderful to to think about all that you've said and that yeah this is so applicable to my to my professional life to my relationship life to my you know to every element of my life it, it, it's so wonderful just to hear everybody's different take on it and and through this lens looking at relationship it i don't know you've just done, done an amazing job but just pointing to uh to the to the to the principles and this understanding uh and and in and through the optics of relationship i think it's uh i, I love that thank yeah. you yeah Thank you, Leela. And we'll be including your information about One Thought and Relationship Ready. So we'll make sure that people have a, a way of connecting with you. And I always love listening to you and really appreciate the feeling that I drop into when I'm in your presence and the feeling that you exude because I feel like you are such a beautiful demonstration of showing up naturally, showing up as yourself, just being you. And it, it's magnetic, really. Wow, get me, get, get me a room or buy me a drink, guys. <laughs> it's, really, it's really nice. Thank you. I enjoyed it. It was really fun. It was yeah. really, really fun. Yeah. Thank you so much you. for having me. And thank you for putting your sweetness in the world. Oh, thank yeah. you. You can really feel it. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Rewilding Love. If you enjoyed this podcast, Please let us know by subscribing on iTunes, and we would love for you to leave a review there. iTunes reviews will steer people to this podcast who need help with their relationships. If you would like to learn more about our work and our online rewilding community, please visit our website, therewilders.org. Thanks for listening. Join us next week.